we need the amount of water in the body to be just right. If there's too much water in the body, we'll be too soggy, we'll be fluid overloaded. If there's not enough water in the body, we'll be too dry, we'll become dehydrated. And when dehydration is severe, that will give rise to a low blood volume, hypovolemia, and that can lead on to shock. So we need the amount of water in the body to be just right, not too much and not too little. And one of the main reasons for this is we have to maintain the correct osmotic pressure in the blood and in the tissue fluids. If there's too much water, that will dilute the blood and tissue fluids and reduce their osmotic potential. If there's not enough water, then there's going to be more solutes per unit of volume if there's not enough water, and that's going to increase the osmotic potential of the fluid. And we need just the right amount of osmotic potential. Let's look at why this is important. So here we have any cell of the body. Now, if there's too much water out here, if there's too much water, then osmosis will mean that this water will tend to go into the cell because osmosis is the movement of water across a semi-permeable membrane from a watery area to a less watery area. It's a watering down phenomena, the movement of water across a semi-permeable membrane. So if there's too much water here, water will move into the cell the cell will become overhydrated and the cell will fill up and eventually the cell will simply burst and that will kill the cell, which of course is, is no good at all. So that's what happens if there's too much water. Now if there's not enough water, if there's not enough water, that's going to increase the osmotic potential of the extracellular fluids. This will now be too osmotic. And if this is too osmotic, that will tend to suck water out of the cell to dilute the hyperosmotic area in the extracellular fluid. So if this is too osmotic because there's not enough water here, water will move out of the cell. And that will mean that the cell will become crenellated and dehydrated. So to maintain cellular volume, so that cells don't blow up, and so that cells don't desiccate and shrink, we need the right osmotic potential in the tissue fluid, and that means we need just the right amount of water. Not too much water, and not too little water. And the main hormone regulating the amount of water in the body is the antidiuretic hormone. The antidiuretic hormone. Now what is a diuretic? Well you probably all know that a diuretic is a drug which increases urine volumes. So a diuretic will increase urine volumes. There'll be a tendency towards a diuresis and a polyurea, a diuretic. An antidiuretic does the opposite. So if a diuretic increases urine volumes, an antidiuretic will reduce urine volumes. And the body homeostatically regulates the amount of water in the body using an antidiuretic hormone. Now this antidiuretic hormone is actually produced in the hypothalamus. It goes down nerve fibres from the hypothalamus into the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland, that is the neurohypophysis. The pituitary gland is the hypophysis. You might remember there's the adenohypophysis at the front and the neurohypophysis at the back. So the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland is the neurohypophysis and the antidiuretic hormone is released from that part of the pituitary gland. 
and I've started to sketch out a pituitary gland here. So this will be the front because this is the anterior part of the pituitary gland. This is the adenohypophysis at the front. And here's the back. This is the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. And as we said, the antidiuretic hormone is actually produced in large nerve cell bodies located in the hypothalamus. So the antidiuretic hormone is made in the cell body up here. It migrates down through the pituitary stalk and is released from the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Now also, in the hypothalamus, there are osmoreceptors. These are specialised cells that detect the osmotic pressure in the tissue fluid in the hypothalamus. And of course, that is determined by the osmotic pressure of the blood perfusing the hypothalamus. So there's osmoreceptors detecting the osmotic pressure of the blood and tissue fluid in the hypothalamus. Now, if we drink a lot and there's more water, if there's more water, that's going to reduce the osmotic pressure of the tissue fluids in the hypothalamus, if we've drank a lot of water. And if we've drank a lot of water, what we want to do is get rid of some of that water. So if we drink a lot of water, we need to get rid of some of it. That means we need to have less antidiuretic effect. Let's just show you what I mean by this. So here we have the, uh, the kidneys down here, which are actually doing the hard work in this. So if there's less antidiuretic hormone, if there's less antidiuretic hormone, let's have a red pen. If there's less antidiuretic hormone, which we'll draw in red, if this is producing less antidiuretic hormone, that means the kidneys are going to have a greater diuresis. The kidneys will produce more water. So if there's too much water in the blood, that's going to decrease the osmotic potential of the blood and tissue fluids. The hypothalamus will respond by producing less antidiuretic hormone. If there's less antidiuretic hormone, there'll be less antidiuretic effect on the kidneys, and the kidneys will respond by producing larger volumes of urine. More urine will be excreted from the body. If larger volumes of urine are excreted from the body, that means there's going to be less water left in the blood, less water left in the tissue fluids, and that will be detected by the osmoreceptors. So drinking too much, less antidiuretic hormone, more diuretic effect, we get rid of the excess water and we restore fluid balance, and therefore we restore osmotic balance as well. But what about if we don't have access to water for a period of time and we don't drink? Or we're sweating a lot, or we're losing a lot of water for some other reason. The amount of water in the body is going to start going down. If the amount of water in the body goes down, that's going to increase the osmotic potential in the blood and in the tissue fluids in the hypothalamus. That's going to be detected by the osmoreceptors. The osmoreceptors will then send messages to these ADH producing and secreting neurons. And if there's not enough water in the body, we need to conserve the amount of water we've got. So if there's not enough water in the body, these neurons will respond and the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland will respond by producing much larger amounts 
of the antidiuretic hormone. Now this hormone is antidiuretic and an antidiuretic is going to reduce the volumes of urine that the kidney produces. So we're now short of water, there's an increased osmotic potential, more antidiuretic hormone is produced, more antidiuretic effect means the kidneys produce less urine. It's an antidiuretic effect. The kidneys are producing lower volumes of urine. But that urine will be much more concentrated. And you know this from your own observations. If you're drinking lots of water, then your urine is going to be light coloured. If you don't drink for a period of time, your urine is going to be dark coloured. It's going to be more concentrated. So the antidiuretic effect means we lose less water. That's good. That's good because it means we don't get even more dehydrated. But also, if we're losing less water, but with the same amount of salts in it, that means there's going to be less salts in the body overall, and the fluid that's left in the body is going to be less osmotic because it's going to contain less salts, particularly the sodium. So the antidiuretic effect means that we excrete less urine, but still excrete the same amount of salt. Therefore, we're going to lower the osmotic potential of the tissue fluids. But then when we drink more, the amount of water in the body goes up. That's going to reduce the osmotic potential. Now we need to get rid of more water, so there's going to be less antidiuretic hormone, so more urine volumes or higher urine volumes will be excreted. So we can homeostatically regulate the amount of water in the body by detecting the osmotic potential of the blood and tissue fluids in the hypothalamus, using that to regulate the amount of antidiuretic hormone released by the posterior pituitary, using that to regulate the amount of water the kidney excretes or does not excrete to either get rid of excess water or to conserve water. So remember, it's an antidiuretic effect. So here we see the anterior pituitary gland on this side, at the front. Adenoglandular tissue. And here we see the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. And we notice that the cells that produce the antidiuretic hormone are actually up here in the hypothalamus, that the antidiuretic hormone will migrate down this axon. That process can actually take a little while, probably a few days. But then when the nerve impulse is generated by this nerve fiber in the hypothalamus, that nerve impulse will rapidly go down this neuron and there will be release of the antidiuretic hormone from the portion of the axon in the posterior pituitary. This will be, once it's released, will be quickly absorbed into the capillaries in the area, into the systemic blood supply, meaning the antidiuretic hormone will have gone directly from the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland into the blood. Therefore, we'll be systemically distributed throughout the body, and of course that means it will go to the kidneys. Now, the optic chiasma is kind of in this area here. You might remember where the optic nerves cross over. So the part of the hypothalamus where the ADH is produced is called the supraoptic, the above the optic chiasma, the supraoptic nucleus. So this is the supraoptic nucleus in this area where most of the ADH is produced. 
Now there is another nucleus at the back of the hypothalamus called the paraventricular nucleus and this one produces the other main product of the posterior pituitary gland which of course is the oxytocin which contracts the pregnant uterus and contracts the milk ducts in the process of milk let down when the baby suckles at the breast. But here we have the ADH producing neuron passing the ADH passing down the axon to be secreted from the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Now the osmoreceptors are very likely to also be in the hypothalamus, probably in the front area. There is a little bit of debate about it, but most people now say that the osmoreceptors are in the anterior part of the hypothalamus here. So here we have an osmoreceptor, and this osmoreceptor is detecting how osmotic the environment around about here is. So if there's more water here, then it will be less osmotic. If there's less water here, then it will be more osmotic. And that takes impulses down to the neurosecretive neuron. So the osmoreceptor neuron is communicating with the ADH secreting neuron, telling it when it's time to generate a new nerve, new nerve impulse to release the antidiuretic hormone. Now this is going to be producing antidiuretic hormone all the time, but it's only going to be released when there's a nerve impulse generated in the neurosecretory neuron. So when there's a lot of water here, when there's too much water here, that's going to reduce the osmolarity of the tissue fluid. And if there's too much water, that means the kidneys need to get rid of some. So if there's too much water, that's not going to fire and there's going to be less antidiuretic hormone secreted. If there's less antidiuretic hormone secreted, the kidneys will excrete larger volumes of urine. Conversely, if there's not enough water here, if there's not enough water, if the patient's becoming dehydrated and there's not enough water, that's going to increase the osmotic potential of the tissue fluid here. That's going to stimulate the osmoreceptor. The osmoreceptor will stimulate the neurosecretory neuron. The neurosecretory neuron will generate a new nerve impulse, causing the antidiuretic hormone to be secreted. The antidiuretic hormone will go in the blood. The antidiuretic hormone, of course, will circulate to the kidneys. And if there's more antidiuretic hormone in the kidneys, then less urine is going to be produced and water will be conserved.